everybody and welcome to another episode of Exploring the Arts. My name is Kaylin Monet Brown. I also go by K Monet, it's my artist name. And if you haven't seen my previous videos, definitely go check them out because we are going to be going on a little bit of a fast, fast track piece here. Um, because today I'm going to show you all how to how I personally photograph my artwork and also jewelry accessories such as my earrings and necklaces and also things like my home decor items as well um and it's a very cost effective way to photograph my stuff um and i know as emerging artists some of you might not have the money to get a light box or the proper equipment but it's pretty easy to do just grab some stuff such as this foam board here and also these lights which I also do use in my exhibitions as well. Um, so yeah, I'm like, these are things that you definitely have around if you're an artist and you're taking this serious and you're pursuing it as a career. Um, and yeah, like, let's get right into it. <laughs> Hi again. <laughs> so like I said, this is super cost effective. I'm showing you my secret to all my photos that you see on my website at kmonatartist.com um, and super easy to take the pictures and I do it right here on my floor. <laughs> like I said, all you need is just a couple of pieces of foam board, um, some LED lights, which I also use in my exhibitions um, and my art shows and art fairs and stuff like that. Um, so I just, I use these. And they're really good. Um, I prop them up in two different locations and they have multiple settings for the lighting. And then if I need to, I would clip on the sides or sit them up on the sides to get a different type of angle of lighting if needed. So I work in a variety of mediums. So I have acrylic paint, I work in resin, watercolor, oil pastel. So what that means is that some of the artwork is going to potentially shine. <laughs> and that creates a glare, which then, you know, um, not very good seeing your own face and your artwork when you're trying to sell the artwork. So I'm going to show you all how I photograph those types of artwork. The ones that are a little bit more tricky and also just the basics for photographing artwork in general. So I, I do have a camera, which I had invested in, I think it was last year. Um, Costco's, by the way, if you got a Costco's, it was only 500 bucks. It came with two, came with two batteries, carrying case, and also this lens and an additional lens as well. Um, it also came with SD card, but the SD card doesn't hold that much, so I went ahead and got another one. Um, really great investment, um, not too expensive, and it's really come in handy a lot with my videos and photographing my artwork and just making it really easy for me. If you don't have a professional camera, you can always just use your phone. Like phones nowadays are just as good as cameras. I'm actually using my phone right now to record this part so I can show you guys how I use my camera. And yeah, let's pick the first piece to be photographed. So we're going to photograph this acrylic painting right here. So I've got this resin piece right here and you see how it's super super reflective, right? I have this frame collage as well. So as you can see it creates a lot of glares. <laughs> First up, I just put the lights on and set the piece of artwork right down in the bottom right here. I am not a photographer so my expertise does not lie there so I do use the guided or either the auto. The, the part that I like about the guide um, guided option on my camera is that I do have some control over the exposure and things of that sort, which is gonna make things so much easier for you when you go to Photoshop. Literally, it's gonna be just a couple of clicks and you're done. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and set that up. So I go here to the second option. It's a bright color. The option tells me that, but I, tend to go with either 0.7 I'm using the live view and what I typically do is I just hover over top of the painting so one thing one problem that I face with a lot of my artwork is 
a glare because a lot of my artwork is dark and it's black and black has a lot of light bouncing from it and just be mindful of that if you also have a lot of dark artwork as well So now that I've got my air review photos, what I do sometimes is I'll get a few angled shots of whatever it is. I typically do this with canvas artwork, but sometimes I do it with the artworks on paper as well because um, you get a little bit more detail when you get in close and whatnot. And also you get some cool photos for Instagram. So as you can see, I've taken a lot of photos because I've learned the hard way that sometimes the photos don't always come out the way you plan. Um, so the more the better to choose from. And these are my two top picks for this. And in the next video, I will be showing you all how I photograph the other two pieces because that is a whole nother world when it comes to photographing items that are super reflective. And also I'll be showing you all how to photoshop these images as well. And hopefully all this information has helped you out with, you know, ready with the bases. Also just showing you a cost effective way to um, photograph them because, you know, we all need photos for social media. We do need photos to share with people. And we do need photos for our future website and this is going to help you out quite a lot for that so i will see you guys in the next video um and please don't forget to subscribe and click the notification button if you like this video so you can learn more and know when i post up again and i will see you guys next time bye